one of these days I need to delve into this nice little radio. They're not worth anything, but it's a nice little tube FM AM radio. Sounds really good, too. <laughs> Has a heck of a uh, nice reception too, even though it's got the antenna that's picking up off the AC cord. It's pretty nice. And now, best prices of the year on the best selection of new and used bicycles in North. Yeah, one of these days I'll get around to tearing into that thing, but that's not the focus of this video. The focus of this video is the Fisher. Yes, once again we're back to working on the Fisher. There's nothing catastrophically that's gone wrong in this thing, but uh, you might remember the first video I shot for this new series I said I was going to start working on the bulbs in this thing. Well, as it turns out, I noticed in that video the bulb isn't working in the tuner anymore. And I've noticed that the ones, the LEDs that I put in the amp itself, they seem like they're a little bit dimmer. They're definitely dimmer compared to the pair that are in the cassette deck. And the cassette deck doesn't get used very often. <clears throat> now on the camera, it looks a heck of a lot brighter than it is. But you can see there's no bulb glowing on the tuner. And uh, that bulb is not shining at all anymore. And this resistor right here is getting quite hot. It's starting to burn up pretty good right now. So, see, it's started to discolor a little bit. So, I have no idea how long it's been doing that. But uh, it'll actually get hot enough to where the uh, hot glue that I use to keep these two things together and to keep from shorting out is actually melting off of it. So, I'm going to have to figure out what's going on with that. I don't know if the bulb just shorted out, or if that resistor's gone bad, and that's why the bulb's not lighting up anymore. I don't know. It's the same resistor, I think, that I used in this guy. I think it was a 390 ohm resistor. <clears throat> I can't remember for sure. These are, I think they're 3-volt three, uh, three bulbs. I think. I honestly don't remember because I bought them years ago in a multi-pack with like, I don't know, 20 or 30 of each color. And they were like 10 bucks on eBay. They are really cheap. I found a lot of the bulbs over the years were, were bad, defective right out, of the, right out of the packaging there. So, I don't know. I don't know what's going on with that, but it definitely gets very, very hot. As you can see inside of the tuner, I'm going to shut this thing off, but you can see there's... Not a whole lot going on in here. I probably said that in the first video I shot about this thing, but it's amazing how much empty space there is in there. Obviously they intended at least this plastic base to be used with other models. It looks like they've got something here that looks like it might be for mounting a transformer, perhaps, for an AC, a true AC. Um, unit instead of you know like this one that plugs into the amplifier but uh, yeah it's it's working just fine I haven't had to do any work to it except that that bulb isn't working this is the style of bulb that I decided I was going to try to use for these and uh, this is a fuse style bulb this is for automotive applications so it's good for up to you know 14 15 volts something like that and so that'll mean that it should work. It might actually work perfectly fine with, with the uh, cassette deck because I think the cassette deck is 16 volts. And other than having to uh, maybe rectify the voltage a little bit, I probably won't have to do anything else to it. The tuner, I, I'm not sure what voltage the tuner actually runs at because the back of this thing actually says up to 19 volts. So I have to assume it's probably putting out 19 volts. I have to check it with the meter again. It's been a couple years. I could have used a true bridge rectifier. And some of those are awfully big though, so I don't know if it would have been enough room to do that or not. Diodes are much smaller. You know, just take a look at those right there. They're much smaller. And I can actually solder them 
right onto this fuse holder that I purchased as well. And you know, I was kind of—I I couldn't really tell in the pictures how big that was going to be. That might be too big. I don't know. Finding a place to mount it back in here—that could be tricky. But if nothing else, I could just solder the wires to it, and it'll still work. And just have to insulate it and stuff like that. But yeah. So let me uh, let me do a little bit of investigating here on this tuner and figure out if I can actually mount something like that on this by taking this panel off, or if I'm just going to have to use this single LED again. The single LED was plenty to light this thing up. I mean, there's not really anything here to light up other than, you know, it says digital synthesized tuner. You kind of get a glow around here, and the little blue and the red lettering, stuff like that kind of lights up, but, you know, you can't really, it's not really that bright. It's not like this. It definitely doesn't look like this, but anyway, I'll figure something out here. All right, so I checked the voltage coming out of the terminals there, and it's about 16 and a half volts AC. So I plugged up one of the bulbs there, and it is bright, 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 bright. But it's handling it. So in theory, I could just wire it in probably the way that it is. Yeah, I think that's going to work. I do notice a little bit of flickering uh, in person. I don't notice it on the camera. I don't know if it's coming up in the camera. But uh, it's very bright, though. So that's good. Which means that uh, I've got some room to play as far as how much voltage I put into it. Uh, to you know, dim it down a little bit. But so far, that's going to work out good, I think, if I can figure out a way to mount it. Now I'm going to have to still do the rectifying. Uh, I'm going to try one diode and see how that works. If that doesn't work, then I'll just have to do a full, create a full rectifier with four of those diodes, and uh, go from there. Now things are getting a little bit more scary here. I removed that plate that was back here. And it is just a plate that's not supporting anything except that bulb. Heck of a lot of metal there just to support a bulb. I've got him laying over there. I've got things kind of precariously rigged up here. It's just basically laying on that cable down there. Cable's acting as the insulator. Yeah. So, let's see what this looks like. Oh, yeah. I don't know why these cameras have a hard time focusing on that, but and that looks really nice. Even with that brightness, that looks really nice. It's nice and even too, pretty much. I can move that over a little bit, I'm not sure. Well that thing is awfully bright. It's like staring into the sun. Looks really nice. So that's going to work if I can figure out a way to mount that bulb. That's going to work out really nice. Honestly, I don't really, I don't notice the flicker right here on it. Interesting, but you can see though, once you start looking, comparing the two, you can see how much dimmer this one is now. And that's actually looks in the camera. That actually looks more accurate now since this is on. Yeah, that should work out pretty good. Just need one of those bulbs, and we'll just need one for this one, too, I think. Okay, so I've got the diodes soldered to the back of the bulb there, as you can see. And the AC wires are going right into the middle of those diodes. And the, for those of you that don't know, I want to do something similar to this. First of all, you're going to have to figure out what the polarity of the bulb is, which side is positive and negative. And of course you can do that with a 9 volt bulb, no big deal. And the next thing you're going to need to do is the diodes, the little line on the diodes right there. You zoom in a little bit here. Right there. Have to go to the positive side of the bulb. Now all four diodes, in this case, the line points to the positive side and the other side becomes the negative. 
So then you just attach your AC power leads, wires, whatever you got there, in this case I got leads, uh, to the middle of those two pairs of diodes, and that gives you your rectifying circuit for DC voltage. Now, when I checked the voltage on this thing before, I said it was about 16 and a half. I hadn't unplugged the other bulb yet. So there was a load there because of that resistor that was going thermal nuclear. I powered this thing on, checked the voltage at each end of the bulb here, and it's reading about 13.7 volts under load, which is exactly right for this being an automotive bulb. So that worked out pretty good. The actual voltage without load coming out of this thing is about 19 volts but there's enough load right here with the diodes the resistance of the diodes and just the milliamp draw of this bulb itself I think it's 30 milliamps but I don't remember for sure if that's what it said or not but anyway the total the total load here is enough to drop it down to 13.7 volts operating volts and that's exactly what we want for this particular bulb now I could lower it a little bit if I need to but I think I'm just going to run it the way that it is I don't feel like doing a whole lot of work on this it's not that big of a deal the brighter it is the better it's, it's, it makes it look nicer I think the uh, <clears throat> other thing too when I looked at these bulbs these few style bulbs there are some that are made for vintage receivers that have surface mount diodes already on them but those cost a little bit more than these do you know, I got this whole 10 pack of these things for like six bucks. So that was a heck of a buy. And these are the warm white bulbs. They're not uh, frost white. So they're a little bit warmer. They're not as warm as incandescent. They're not as orangish as an incandescent, but they're just a little bit warmer than the frost. But you could go white. You know, if you want to change the color of this, you know, you could use red, orange, green, blue, you know, pink green, you know, whatever color you want to. If you don't want to use something white, if you want to, you know, personalize it, customize it a little bit, you could make it whatever color you want to. It'd look, it'd look pr pretty good, probably. I actually thought about doing that. But in the end, I just decided to go with warm white. So the other thing, the last thing I'm going to do is i got to mount it. i got to solder the wires, too, obviously, but one of the leads taken off there. <clears throat> but I decided I'm going to just go ahead and hot glue it to this. So I didn't really feel that there is a good way to mount this in here and uh, that I felt wouldn't uh, you know necessarily would eventually maybe fall off or do something I thought about mounting it like this under there and I did test it and there is enough there is enough light that shines up into the plastic right here uh, to, to light up the Face plate, but it's a lot brighter if I point the light directly at the edge here like it's meant to be so that's how I'm going to do it I'm just going to hot glue uh, the bulb into place after I solder the wire the wires to the back of it there I'm just going to hot glue it into place like that try to center it as best I can and uh, that should work and hot glue will be nice because hot glue is not terribly permanent it adheres really good and I checked this bulb really doesn't get hot at all so I don't have to worry about it melting but uh, um, you know if I need to take that off again the hot glue will just peel off so that'll work out really nice if I ever have to replace the bulb again so I'm just gonna scuff the surface of this a little bit to give the hot glue something to adhere to a little bit better this won't affect the look of the light because the light's coming in at the edge right here but even if I sanded the edge it wouldn't affect it I don't, I don't think but I'm just going to scuff it up just a little bit I'll do the bottom side here as well and I'll give it a little bit of a tooth for it to grab, grab a hold of and the bulb itself I already cleaned the flux off of this with some 91% uh, alcohol actually it's 99% but uh, that stuff just came right off of there nice and easy so I'm gonna get that done and when we come back I'm gonna have this thing all finished up and uh, we'll see what it looks like so 
I soldered up and tested it, and it was dang bright. It was like staring at the sun. So I went through my multiple various numbers of resistors here and uh, tried some different uh, values to see which one worked out the best. This one is a three, 390 ohm resistor. It's dropping the voltage down to about 9.7 volts at the bulb here. So we'll call that, you know, maybe 10 volts. That seems to be just about right for brightness. It's not quite as bright, but it's not terribly dim either. It's just about right, I think. I already tested it over here. And it lights that up perfectly fine. I think that's a that's a really good brightness level right there, I think. So that's what I'm going to do with that. Leave that the way that is. Uh, I think uh, for this particular bulb, uh, anywhere from 270 to 470 uh, is about right for this, depending, depending on what your input voltage is and how bright you want it to be. Of course, you'll have to experiment with that on your own. But if you have one of these Fisher tuners uh, and you use one of these bulbs, I would recommend the 390 ohm. Uh, the 330 ohm resistor will be a little bit brighter than this, so I would recommend either one of those two for something like this. So now I know 10 volts is that brightness on that bulb. That's that's the goal is to get all of these to be about 10 volts with that bulb, and that should make these all about the same brightness level. Um, if not, I might just adjust it a little bit. You know, try a different. A different resistor value or something like that. I've got this whole multi-pack of varying resistor values that I got, and this is very handy to have. These seem to be pretty decent resistors. I've I've had good luck with these things, and I've actually I've measured the the resistance of these, and they're actually spot on to what is printed uh, for them to actually be. So that's pretty impressive. I think that turned out pretty good. This glue is uh, high temperature glue, so um, as long as it doesn't get hotter than the melting temperature of the glue, it should be fine. And it's not hot at all. It's been on for about 10 minutes now. Just been kind of testing it to see here. Diodes aren't hot. The resistor's not hot. Nothing's hot here. It's just kind of maybe lukewarm, but that's fine that'll be good enough I put the wires back under here so just in case this decides to fall off it'll just fall into the wires and it won't be a shorting out incident but I don't think that's gonna happen that's on there pretty tight and we have a nice lit up display again there yeah so just gotta get the cover back on and now this project will be wrapped up, and in the next video, uh, we'll tackle the lights and the amplifier. So stay tuned for that. Till then, peace out, everyone.